Freaking at the Freakers Ball on this freaky Friday the 13th, July 13, 2018, right here on RealLibertyMedia.com. That's channel one for y'all on the, on the Real Liberty Media page there, or just go to the Freakers Ball page from the drop down. Either way, works out great, gets you to the video show page there, and the chat as well. Or you can just go straight to the video on vonlive.tv slash Real Liberty Media, and you'll find us there as well. Also, if you're on the audio stream and all the many places it may be, uh, not excluding, of course, the rlmradio.xyz site, yeah, check it out there. Check it out on Freedoms Network. Check it out on the Real Liberty Media site. Check it out on Internet Radio and Tuned In and uh, wherever else it may be. <laughs> so howdy to the folks over there at Freedoms Network If anybody's tuned in on that side, howdy to y'all If you're jumping in from Minds, hi Minds If you're jumping in on the Skype, you're probably Moose Girl Hey, hey now <laughs> Hey now <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, so uh, uh, good, I'm just saying hi to everybody Okay We're saying hi to the various sites out there. I said hi to Freedoms Network, Minds, uh, Tweeters on the Twitter. Howdy to you all. And, um, of course, all the folks here in the Real Liberty Media chat. Yep, got a good group group of folk here, as we always do. And uh, you know who you are, so just uh, say hi to yourself from us. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That. <laughs> yes. Oh boy. No. Anyway, but uh, yeah. Hi to all the uh, active uh, folk that are hanging out with us tonight here in the chat. And, uh, yes, howdy, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's, there's a bunch of you out there. So uh, hey, now this is free enslaved. <laughs> I see that. X, dot X Y Z for the win says Chloe. She 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 only ever listens on the audio. She never comes into the video. Well, I'm about never. Right. I don't mind never, but you know whatever. She uh, whatever she, floats she your boat. She prefers the audio stream. That's all. Yeah. That's all. And, and some you know there's there's certain people that do. They they, yep. uh, they just like that. And you know, well, whatever. whatever it, works, works. It, works, it works just as fine. You don't need to really see the videos. No, not really. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of cool for me to see the videos sometimes, just because I I like that, you know. But yeah, you don't sure, have sure. To, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I prefer the videos. It's yeah, you know, yeah, you know I am. Yep. Wait, I mean, like I've been listening to the Grateful Dead audio, the con the Dead and Company shows via audio only. I mean, now they'll play the first the first song of the, the, the set. You know what I mean? The, the opener. They'll play it live, just the one song though. Yeah. And so then I just listen to the audio, and it, it's fine. I mean, you're not you can't sure. see the visuals. You don't get that part of it, but it still sounds really freaking killer. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah. Yeah, so no, I fun. I listened to the part of that show the other night. When was it? Last night, night before. Night before, um, oh, uh, yep. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it sounded great. So. Oh yeah, it's um, it's been really great. They've been really doing well. That band, they've just been gelling and getting better like the whole time. It seems like they're doing really good. That's pretty cool. Yep, they're playing tonight in Boulder. Yeah. Folsom, is that where Folsom Field is? I couldn't tell you. Oh, okay. But anyway, it's called Folsom Field. I believe it's Boulder, Colorado. That's where they're playing. All right. So, yep. So not listening tonight because I'm doing the Freakers Ball, which oh. is fine. Yeah, you know. You heard, I mean, like I can you, miss one. Like you said, you've heard, you know, <laughs> six or more shows. Right. <laughs> I will not be here next Friday, though. No? Nope. Going to another festival. What's this one? Moon Dance. Moon yeah. Dance. Dance Festival. All right, that's the uh, yes. the Van Morrison one. No, 
It's some blue. It's it's a lot of bluegrass <laughs> bands. Um, not all bluegrass though, but mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's at a brand new location this year. It's at an actual campground, meaning there'll be showers there. Oh, well, that's good. Which is a plus, yeah. Because Moon Dance is known for being super freaking hot, like the whole weekend. Oh, well, it shouldn't be too bad this year. No, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I mean, and who, either who's way. The, uh, who's the who's the who's the bands that you're looking forward to seeing? Okay, let me just go to the thing. Oh, otherwise, I won't. Go to the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it's Railroad Earth is one of the big headliners this year. Um, where the hell? Oh, come on, now. Split Lip Rayfield, did I say that? No, you said Railroad Earth. That was the only one you said. Okay. So you got Split Lip Rayfield. I guess it's not, not just a list or something, huh? <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I had to sneeze. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, anyway, um, Split Lip Rachel, I'm really looking forward to seeing. They're a three-piece band. They're from Kansas, and they're um, they're amazing. Okay. I saw them at uh, Blue Ox last year, not this year, the year before. But, anyway, Jeff Austin Band, Split Lip Rachel, Diesel Jenkins, Monsters of Grass, which I know the lead singer in that band, Feed the Dog, Kind Country, Sloppy Joe, Insomniac Gypsy, Dig Deep, Armchair Boogie, The Liver Killers, Black River Review, Gin String, Gin Strings, Burnt Toast and Jam, River Valley Rangers, Shoe String, Joe and the Star Sheep, Thief, <laughs> Second Strings, Red Ben and the Missing Miles. All right. Sounds like a... Oh, so, there you go. Quite, quite the lineup there, and you even get the Liver Killers. Yep, the little, I got to see them there, so I missed them at the at the one le, uh, two weeks ago. So <laughs> it will be good. It will be good. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, so um, it's at a new location, and hopefully this location does not have chiggers. Let's hope not. The other location did. And no one would believe me. The first year I went to Moon Dance four years ago, I got literally eaten alive by chiggers. It was terrible. Yeah, it well, was terrible. There's some, there's, there's some like uh, natural repellents you can put on you to keep them off you. I do, but that time I wasn't. I, it was in the morning when I got bit by them, and I wasn't thinking right. It wasn't like I was wasted or anything. It was the last day of it, and I'm walking through. Wet grass. Yeah, well, that's where they hang they're out. In so. the, they're in the grass. That's where they're at. Right, that's where they hang out. Yeah, and it's like, ugh. And I did, I thought it was mosquitoes, you know. Yeah, no, they'll chew you up the, fast, those little suckers. Oh, God. They, they, they seriously, you can't even see them. No, well, especially. You can't they, see them even. They, especially they're but usually they're right, out there yeah. at night, you know, so. What? They're usually out there at night, so. Right, right. I mean, but you can't see them, and they're biting you. You don't know. You think it's mosquitoes, and you're just like, oh, I'll put some bug stuff on, you know, which I think the bug stuff does, you know, repel the chiggers, too. But the first year when I did not I did not have bug stuff on because I wasn't thinking. It was like in the morning, you know what I mean? And I was like, right. oh, I don't need bug stuff right now, you know. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I learned my lesson, but this location should be better. I think since it's a campground, I don't think there'll be chiggers there. Well, let's hope. You know what I mean? Because they wouldn't have a campground. Like, your campground wouldn't last if you had chiggers at your campground. Right. It just wouldn't work. Yeah, <laughs> People I'm sure they would not could go just, there. They, they could just tote the place in Malathion and it would take care of them. Yeah, yeah. That's hey, really and bad. and you wouldn't get bit, so you wouldn't really know you're being poisoned. <laughs> right, yeah. So there you go. It's kind of aspect. Yeah. Oh. But man. I think that I mean chiggers aren't a normal thing up here. We have mostly mosquitoes and wood tits and stuff. We don't, you know. That's the first time I've ever been bit by chiggers is going to that location. You know, and I do a lot of traveling, go to a lot of festivals and everything. That was the first year, first place that that ever happened. Yeah, chiggers hang, chiggers hang down, out down south more, so. 
Yeah, and it, I was surprised, actually. I was like, whoa! And, uh, yeah, they're a mite. That's what it means. Oh, you, you should know them. all about them, free and slaved, because... Yeah, so you're... You're, itchy. you're in it Florida. It was the worst itchy I've ever had in my life. Like, we're, I've been bit by mosquitoes my whole life. And they're pretty itchy. But chiggers, you cannot stop. And not, anything I tried would not stop it. I tried every remedy you could think of. I tried the baking soda. I tried everything people said. And it still <laughs> wouldn't fucking... I took Benadryl and it didn't help it. I mean, it was bad. It that, was that, really that's bad. a good name for him, Free. Uh, what the fuck's. <laughs> yeah. No seams aren't the same thing, though, okay? No seams are a different thing. Chiggers are different than no seams. No seams are, they fly. Chiggers just kind of crawl and shit. Harvest mites, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, all they're all nasty. I, all I know is down there in Mississippi, Louisiana, oh boy, they're, they're, they're bad down there. The chiggers, yeah. They're, yeah. they're worse in warm weather. Warmer weather, right, like you know, but that's when they come out in the summer during the right. at nights and in the grass. See, the old right, the old location where they used to have the festival, like it's behind a bar, just an open field. I mean, and it was like a, in the one corner, or whatever. It's kind of swampy and stuff. Yeah. So I'm thinking that's why they had chiggers there. You uh, know, because so this place will be better because it'll be maintained and everything. You know what I mean? It's a sure. Camp. It's not just a fucking field, you know? Right, right. So anyway, uh, today's your lucky day. Yes, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's been a while. I, don't, I can't remember. It's been a while since we had a Friday the 13th show. Uh, a couple months, probably three, four months, probably. Yeah, 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 easily. Oh, whenever they come, you know, whenever, how many Friday the 13th there are in a year, so. Right, um, yeah. And and that varies, of course, but uh, it's been a while, a little while since we had one. So, always always good when they come around. I always like the Friday the 13th thing, you know. See, see, the problem, though, Kate, with the mosquito control is that what are they spraying? Everything. You know, it's not good for you. Yeah, oh, and well, it, of course it's, it's not. We're fucked. <laughs> we're in a catch-22, you know. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, to be fair, in uh, Central Florida, what's worse for you, the, the spray or the mosquitoes? I, I'm gonna say, right. the, I'm gonna exactly. say the mosquitoes I mean, are much worse for you. Um, pick your poison, right? <laughs> those, those mosquitoes are, they, 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 uh, they swarm. Yeah, they, they yeah, do. So. I know. Hey, I've lived in a mosquito state my whole life, so I know. Yeah, I, I never, I never seen them like I did down there in Florida. Oh yeah, God! I mean, they can get so bad. Yeah, crazy. Like, they got all kinds of critters going on down there in Florida, though. See, that's the thing that you know, you guys complain about winter, and I complain about it even when it gets really cold. But there are some benefits to winter. <laughs> like it kills all the bugs. You know. Yeah. It gets really fucking cold, so bugs cannot survive. <laughs> um, and we don't have all these critters all year long, like alligators. Like alligators, we don't have them up here because they can't live in the winter time. Right. So well, we don't have them, and we don't have scorpions. So scorpions can't live in the winter time. Huh? No problem. We don't have tarantulas. Tarantulas? No, what's wrong with tarantula? Nothing. I, I'm not afraid of them. I'm just saying they don't live up here. They, they don't they, have them. They up don't here. bother nobody. I would be fine with tarantula. It's some scorpions. I don't fucking like. I don't like them. Well, scor scorpions are a lot more sneaky. Yeah. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I would not want to deal with them. But scorpions. but generally they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool little critters. Right. Um, I mean, I gotta deal with wolf spiders. That's you know, and we have huge weird water spiders and duck spiders and stuff that get really really big. Right. And, yeah, so we're not, like, immune from this stuff. I mean, we have our fair share of critters and shit. Wood Woodman already ran into a rattler. Yeah, that's what I saw him write that. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, he's in Arizona, so. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, in the, in, the, in the deep, deep desert there. Right. Tucson area. Great, greater Tucson, I guess. 
But uh, yeah, they got. Definitely... No, I don't. I think they're too dry or too. It's too wet in Florida for scorpions. I think. Ah, uh, yeah. Need dry. Know. We we had them in the deserts in San Diego, but I never saw any in the in the in the town. You know. Yeah. Yeah. In the city, whatever. But uh, I haven't seen any scorpions here. I know they are here though. But, uh, and the other thing is we can actually swim in our lakes and rivers without fear of again getting eaten by an alligator or getting bit by a water moccasin. Yeah. <laughs> so there's those chances. I mean you can get you could get your foot gouged by a muskie, but it's not that, that's nothing compared to an alligator. I mean, but that you and muskie can fuck you up. Like I did a story two years ago about this girl that was dangling her leg off the boat and a muskie were gonna attack her foot and tore it up. Like Pour it up. They got some teeth on them. So, yeah, we have some critters up here, but nothing like, you know, big, like, alligator, you know. Yeah. Or shark. We don't have shark. So what what, what kind of uh, scorpion did you get stung by there, Kate? Some of them are, are, are pretty bad, and some are not so bad, but... Yeah, and, and I, I, I And I ask, I not was, knowing well, really what, they, what the bad ones are called. <laughs> yeah. How do you know? I don't know, but uh, some of them are really bad, and some of them are not so bad. <laughs> and usually, I would freak out. I would freak the, out too. Uh, yeah, I don't it know. Kind I would freak a, out. Kind of a clear, <laughs> clear-looking one. It wasn't one of those big black ones, right? <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, baking soda. Baking soda works for okay, everything. Okay, well, good. Baking, yeah, baking soda is awesome. Yeah, it draws it out. It draws it out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, great. 30 minutes. Sweet. Oh, so, nice. It's a mild okay. one. Well. All right. Well, let's uh, kick it off with some tunages here. All righty. Let's do that. Get it kicked off for a Freaky Friday. For a Friday the 13th. 13th. You know it. Fairies wear boots. Thank you, guys. Yeah, fairies do wear boots. That, <laughs> well, I guess smoking and tripping is all that you do. Anyway, that was uh, Brown Sabbath. Brown Sabbath. <laughs> Covering Black Sabbath, Fairies Wear Boots. There's a whole bunch of songs by uh, Brown Sabbath posted up there, that band, uh, on, on the YouTube. You can check them out. Brown Sabbath, pretty good stuff. Before that, the Mason Rack Band doing Baby Please Don't Go and the old switcheroo, where Mason Rack, the lead guitarist and vocalist, uh, takes the drums. The bassist takes the lead guitar. The drummer takes the bass. <laughs> anyway, we kicked it off there with... Uh, Friday the 13th, he's back, the man behind the mask, Alice Cooper tune there with uh, a couple of YouTube guys uh, having a good time doing it up there, very nice, very nice. <laughs> yes. He's back, the man behind the mask, Jason. Awesome. Yep. So. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not happy. Uh oh. What will happen now? Again. What what happened now? God dang it. What Okay, the... I know this happens all the time. And it's nothing new. But the trend is continuing. And please, if you love somebody that is suicidal, do not call nine one one on them. Please do not. Never, never, never do that. Please don't. Don't <laughs> Don't don't call don't. out the hit squad. Because the person that you love, that you want assistance for, will most likely end up dead by the cops shooting them and killing them. Right. It's not a, it's okay. not it's not good. No. So today in Minnesota, the city's uh a city a suburb west of Minneapolis. Chanhassen, Minnesota. Mom calls the cops 10 a.m. this morning. 16-year-old son is suicidal and threatening her with knives and a bat. Okay. Calls the cops. Kid's dead now. 
Um, apparently, he must have came out of his house at some point, and they tased him at some at one point. But then that must not have worked, and they shot and shot him and killed him. Sixteen year old, going to be a junior in high school, um, an athlete. Good kid from all, what is, you know, they've talked to some of his friends. Good kid, happy kid, whatever. Okay, I've had teenagers, they get moody, you know, um, and I, you know, the baseball bat and the knife thing, I don't know what all went down there, but it's your kid, right? I mean, yeah, I'm just... I'm just saying, don't call the cops for suicidal. I, I guarantee you, the last thing that mom thought was going to happen was her kid was going to end up dead. Right. Well, she hasn't she been listening. She called 911. She had no idea her kid was going to end up dead. Right. Because she hasn't been listening to the Freakers Ball. and. Right. She would have known better. Yeah. Because we've done so many stories on this, like so many. I know. Like it's it's not even funny, and it's the same scenario, basically, pretty much the same scenario. You know, um, if my kid was trying to threaten me with a freaking bat, I'd be like, "Are you fucking kidding me, dude?" <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, that would not end well for the kid. <laughs> I'd be like, um, "Hello, what?" Oh, you know, God. you don't call the cops. I mean, she might have, I mean, why couldn't she have called, like, one of his buddies or something? You know, I'm thinking, who do you call instead, right? If I'm going to talk about this, who would you call instead? You'd call the dad, or you'd call a relative, another relative, or you'd call one of his friends, one of the kid's friends. Or you just wait till they Come settle on. down, I mean. Or just say, hey, dude, whatever's going on with you, I don't know. But you need to chill the fuck out and just chill out, dude. You know, I mean, or call a friend, one of his buddies. Say, hey, uh, you know, he's freaking out. He's, you know, talking crazy. I don't know what to do. Can you come over and talk with him? You know what I mean? Right. But the natural instinct for people is to just pick up that phone and call 911 because they're looking, that mom wanted help for her son. You know, she might have been felt feeling threatened or whatever, but I guarantee you, she did not want her son to be shot and killed by the cops when she no. picked up that phone and called nine one one today. Certainly not. No. You know, and my thing is, is this how they tr they train these cops the same way? No matter what situation, they don't care about age, gender. They don't care about that. No. If, the, if if there's a human being or a threat to that police officer, they're gonna shoot to fucking kill. They right. don't care if the woman if it's a woman and they're pregnant. They're gonna shoot to kill that person. Sure. We've talked about these stories and how they do their training. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. And they do. It, they're they're trained to shoot at whatever is posing a threat to them. Right, and, and it's only posing a threat. Pregnant woman, elderly woman, or an elderly man, don't matter. Right, and the only reason it's posing a threat is because of the, they put themselves in a position where that kid would be a threat. Yeah, and, and I'm sorry, this kid, you know, the mom said he's suicidal. Now, I don't know what all went down when after they tased the kid, but the kid was an athlete. You know, he was probably a strong 16-year-old kid, and that first tase or whatever didn't work. You know? Right. He He's an athlete. You know? Sure, yeah. Kid needed help. He didn't need to be shot and killed and murdered today. No, you know, nobody he's obviously needs going to, And you know how teenagers are. And he's 16. You know, they get emotional. And they fucking... You know, if you just... You, you gotta just let it, let it work itself out. You know? Right, absolutely. <sighs> yeah, I know. She should have she should just give him some time to calm down. Uh, well, call one of his buddies up. I mean, it shouldn't have happened, okay? 
the way the cops handle these situations is wrong. Okay? Their tactics are incorrect. They are. You don't... For them to train the same for a suicidal person as for a, someone that robbed a bank or something, or someone that fucking set a bomb off, you know, or I don't know. I don't know how to compare these things. You know what I mean? It's just like, the mom wanted help for her son. She yeah. did not expect him to wind up dead. I guarantee you that. No, no, but... This is the tragedy of this whole thing, you know. And I don't know what was going on in this kid's life before this, or, you know what, maybe drugs were involved. They haven't said any of that. But I guarantee, if he was an athlete, odds are he... You know, he's not in school right now, so he could have been drunk, maybe, or high on something, but I, you know, who knows? We don't know the whole story. We probably won't. But, yeah, like, you know, for the last person you should call is really his 911 person, especially if it's someone you give a fuck about, okay? If it's some dude that's trying to jump off a building that you don't fucking know, you know, and you, you know... Maybe call 911 in that situation. But if it's someone that you love and you want them to get hey, help. Yeah, I'll tell you what. If if some guy or girl or whoever is standing on a cliff or a top of a building or a bridge or whatever, and they say they want to end it all, who am I to stop them? They want to go. That's true, too. It's their right, right to go. I get, yeah. It, you got a point there. You know, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know what I would do. I mean, you got a point. You know, if someone really wants to end their life, they, they should be allowed to. <laughs> right, and they should be able to do it themselves, not have some idiot come up there in a goofy-ass uniform and... Costume. Yeah, and, and blow them away, because that's not how they wanted to do it. Right, I mean, by the mom calling 911, it actually escalated the situation to a deadly point. She should have called someone else before she called 911. You know, the dad, a friend, whatever. Do not call the cops if it's someone you love. I'm just telling you guys, don't do it. No, no, don't do it. Uh, exactly, Juan just, Taco. Yeah, he's, he's dead on rights. Saving them would aggressively violate their rights. Right. You know. It's their, it's, it, it, it's, it's their life, it's their body. They do with it what the hell they please. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, and I, I don't I'm know. And I don't know if he was, I don't know if he's joking around there or not, but I, I'm serious about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It, it's not, it's it, not up to me to intervene in that. We've just talked about, so there's so many times, and then I, I, it just hits home when it's a young, a kid. Yeah, I, I mean, it's different. A 12-year-old in Cleveland, it, it, or wherever, it, it's and then, di- it's you know, different. now this kid, and it's just like, it's a kid. Yeah, yeah. To me, it's different, you know, if they call, like, the suicide hotline. Then, of course, they're looking for help, so that's not a problem, and you can right. intervene in that situation. Yes. But, you know, if they're up there by themselves, or... You, I mean, okay, just put yourself, pretend you're that cop. How are you okay with this? I, I, I How are you fucking I okay with this? I, I, I can't How pretend are, that. How do you go home, and let's say you're, you have children of your own? How are you all right with this? Yeah, well, you know, steroids. How can you live with yourself after that? If you, if, you, if that one of those cops is married and has kids of them, their own, how can they live with themselves knowing that they fucking just killed a 16-year-old kid today? You know? I, I don't. I don't think they see uh, you and I and anybody that's not one of them as human. So, Ugh. they they don't see you as as something that's you know worth saving. What if it was their kid though? You know, mm-hmm. oh, that'd probably be different. Would I they guess. do? The, would they treat their child the same way as they treated these people? This these this parent's child. I imagine not. I, I, no. I would imagine not. You know, would they try to talk him down and stuff? Uh, yeah. I, you would think so, yeah. I mean, they, they released 
least a little bit of the 911 call. It just says shots fired, or the, the call that's from the cop car. They're not going to release all of it, obviously. Yeah, see, Free's talking about uh, under a mer medical emergency, um, they, they, they act differently, or they, they try to act a little differently. Something slightly less aggressive. Maybe, yeah, and that, that's probably true. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, but I don't, five different agencies responded to this, and I don't know if they were there before the kid was killed or after. But five different agencies from different jurisdictions responded to this scene. Yeah. I mean, it. it, it, it wow. I mean, just the way. I mean. Okay, for one thing, the mom was wrong, but she didn't know she was wrong because she's ignorant. Right. She's ignorant. She thought the cop. she's got this idea in her head that the cops were there to help. Right? Absolutely. That, that's well, a... they helped him commit suicide is what they did. Right. By killing him. And some of the friends that in the report to the initial stories... They they mentioned that some of the friends asked why such deadly force had to be used. Well, yeah, why? It's a sixteen year old kid. <laughs> yep, suicide by cop. That could yeah, be. But, I but, thought about that. But on a say, talk. I thought about. Yeah, you know, I, if if the kid really wanted to go, then. Right. It, it, you know, we we I don't know. So, it, but you know, I know how teenagers are. I know how they are. You think everything's so bad in the end of the world, you know, but then you you, you, you come down, you, you, you know what I mean? You come back to earth. I mean, he was an athlete. Mary. I'm not saying he was a perfect kid. I don't know the kid. I didn't know him. You know, maybe he had other issues going on. Yeah, I don't who knows? Know, you know, maybe his girlfriend maybe, just dumped him or something. Right. From what I know, though, being an athlete, you know, and not all athletes adhere to this, but there's a certain code of conduct you're supposed to follow. Right? And that's during, this, obviously, school's not in session right now. But like you say, it could have been a bad breakup or something. You know what I right. mean? Okay. Maybe the mom started know. getting on his case, and he fucking said, oh, I'm going to fucking, you know, with this baseball bat. It's like, yeah, whatever, buddy. You know what I mean? I just, I feel really bad. I just feel really bad because I know in my heart, that that mom did not want her son to be killed. That's why she called for help. She didn't want, she wanted him to be all right. And now he's dead. And, you know, that's just, I feel so bad for them, for them that family. And, and the kids' friends, really. Sure. You know, it's just, and this is a not in the ghetto, all right? This didn't happen in some fucking bad part of town. This happened in an upscale suburb. So this this goes to show you that it doesn't fucking matter how much fucking money someone has. They still have they still have issues. They still have issues, and the cops will still kill them. Oh, the feed dropped for free. If it was my system, the feed dropped. What? I would say, oh, that's my system. I mean, if it was my. Oh case, no, I'd be I like, got oh. I got a, I got a red marker here. Uh-oh. We, maybe we did drop, then. Um, well, let me just stop the stream and restart it. Darn it. it. Stop the stream and restart it. Darn it. Let's see, it's yellow. It's green. Okay. Okay, it's, okay, it should be good. Let's, let me... Let me test it over here. For some reason, when... You I know, wonder how long it was down, though. Well, if he just mentioned it, so... See here. Is it on? Are we are we are we live? I'm I'm, I'm trying to ref refresh the page. Oh, here looks so. like we're back on. My thing's all green now, so. Ooh, that could be a problem. <laughs> Not I don't that know if thing. You, want that. you might get that checked out. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, it's going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, different thing. <laughs> Not that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not that thing. Oh, so yeah, man. I just I know, and I know this happens all the time. And this kid, you know, he's a statistic now, and it's just like, ugh, it should not have happened. It just should not have went down this way. No, it shouldn't have. God, dang it! I know. I get, 
I get upset because it's just not correct, the tactic and how they handle these situations. Like, this kid wasn't a criminal, you know? He didn't freaking, you know, ugh. I know, I know. Ah. All right. That's, I mean, uh, we, it, it's so sad that we haven't talked about this before, that we could seriously do a show on one topic. Freaker's Ball could be about solely one topic only. Oh, yeah. yeah I, but I, that is the cops. I, I, there's, there's so many of those stories, and I try to ignore most of them. Just because just they're just so yeah. frustrating, you know? They're just so frustrating. and Yes, very frustrating. You know, unarmed yeah. people getting killed. You know, I don't know if the kid had a weapons when the cops tased him. I mean, you mean to tell me you three cops can't take down a teenager and just hold him down? I mean, you're, you're able to tase him. You can't, like, tackle him? Right. Something. Anything different than that. I, I don't know. Rollins had a good suggestion. Spider-Man net. Not actual, like, Spider-Man, like, a net that you could put over somebody. Yeah. To, like, subdue them. You know what I mean? Sure. And just get them there. And or so or whatever, not... you know? They got beanbag guns, and they got, they got all right. kinds of different Something. stuff. Something other than actually killing this fucking kid. And then the neighbor, because it happened, the kid left the house, because it happened outside. There was a neighbor out there. He heard 12 shots, and he's a gun owner. He's a hunter. He knows what gunshots sound like. He knew it was 12 shots. That's a lot Why of shots. Why is he going to shoot him so many times? If you shoot him once and he goes down, why do you got to keep shooting? God. Or shoot him twice and he goes down. Why do you have to put 10 more shots in that kid? That makes right. no fucking sense at all. That's overkill. It wasn't like he had a gun. No, he didn't. He didn't have a gun. It was either a knife or a baseball bat or nothing. What's right. that kid have? Yeah. And then the one story, remember we did the story about the kid with the knife? It was the same situation. Suicidal, the parents called the cop. He had a fucking parry knife. Yeah. A very, not like a machete or something. No, so like, just like throw him, a, throw him an apple or something and he'll start peeling it. <laughs> right, and you couldn't subdue that kid. And there was another story. The kid had a fucking screwdriver. Right. Like, really? You can't no, yeah. Well, there was a, there was a. I, I've, I've mentioned this story before, but uh, it was a you know kind of a mentally slow guy in Albuquerque, and he had a spatula in his hand. <laughs> right, a spatula. And they, and they killed his ass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's what are they gonna do? Slap? What's he gonna do? Slap the cop's face with his ass with a spatula? Oh, my God. Uh, maybe, you know, they were, you know, looking for uh, something to flip their burgers. I don't know, but whatever. Twelve shots because more two cops shot him. It said two cops did the shooting of that kid. Two cops shot that kid today. Right. Not one, two. So. All right, let's yeah. hear some more music here. All right, let's do that. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I know it's it's, it's, it's a, today, it's, a it's, it's a tough a topic. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very tough topic to cover, and, and and I mean, you know, we could just go on and on, but right, yeah, it, we gotta it, we'll, we can move on from that story. I just <laughs> it just pisses me off. I, I understand. Not I understand. right. All right, well, let's make you feel a little better. It's a uh, chill, okay. Massa. Awesome. Let me teach you how to eat. Yeah. yeah. Some serious rockabilly there. Fun little ditty called Let Me Teach You How to Eat with uh, Reverend Horton Heat. Uh, Moose Girl request there, by the way. So, uh, excellent tune there. Before that, a suck puppet request. Eric Clapton, Carlos Santana. High time we went. Uh, that was recorded on July 8th, so just uh, shortly ago. I think I saw quite a few others in there. Dr. John and, uh, oh, hell, who else did I see? Uh, uh, Doyle Bramhall, second or two. <laughs> others others up there on the stage with him. Uh, so great, great tune there. Kick it off with uh, Joe Bonamassa doing Spanish boots from the British Blues Explosion live there. 
uh, all, all good tunes there in that set. Of course, there are always all good tunes on this show. <laughs> okay, so we set off kind of a firestorm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, so Free and Slave says they get away with murder because people let them get away with murder. But I'm saying, okay. There you go, Circle. All cops are gang members. They are. They, that's definitely a big gang they got going on. And I said, "What? How do we let? How do we let them? How do we stop them? You know? Uh, how do you stop? I'm them? not letting them get away with this shit. I don't like it. What am I supposed to fucking do, though? You know, this kid's dead. It's too late for this fucking kid. Well, right. You know. I mean, how many? You know, I, I, I get it to a point. Like, you know, I listen to Hal's show. I've listened to it plenty through the years. Right. You know, um, I'm still not sure on how we stop them. And I don't believe that one person has the answer either. True. I think there's many ways to go about things. Um... There's more than one way to do to achieve a goal. Sure. I'm playing the game just like everybody fucking else is. I've been a single mom for 18 fucking years. I've been doing what I gotta do to fucking provide for my kids and play the game, even though I don't fucking agree with it. Okay? And right. I do get fucking pissed off. I don't like what's going on. I really don't. I would hope not. At the same time, I'm not, I had to do what I had to do to ensure the well-being of my children. Oh, well, that's a good thing. And I had to play the game. I guarantee you, if I would not have done that, and would have done the opposite, would have been some welfare mom living on welfare, not getting a job, not blah, blah, blah. I would have got way more criticism for that. Yeah, Same but uh, you, you would have never done that. That's, it would have been not... like, why aren't you fucking raising your kids? Why don't you go get a fucking job? Right? I would have been called out on the carpet for that. Sure. You know, oh, you're just living off the government. I would have been roasted, okay? Probably. Roasted. But I didn't do that. I played the fucking game. I worked my fucking ass off, raised my fucking kids, working for a job where I have to fucking pay taxes, I have to pay property tax, <laughs> and I have to fucking pay tax just like the rest of everybody else does. Right? Yeah. Right. Well, so, for, uh, go ahead. For a free slave to say, all women should be barefoot and pregnant. I, I think it was a question that he... But uh, uh, um, no. barefoot, I, I go with barefoot. Um, but that's you know everybody should be barefoot. That's an old school <laughs> theory from way back when. That's an old school <laughs> fucking mindset that was just fucking dumb. And, and the pregnant part, you know, um, nah, we can pass on that one. It's a fucking commune fucking statement right there. Yeah, no, he was he was asking a question more. He he was asking a question, not making a statement. No, they shouldn't be. Oh. That's not what I said or what I suggested at all. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Um, I'm just yeah. saying, for me to fucking, what, stand up and fight against something, pick the cause, okay. I, I picked the cause. Raising my fucking children. And not living on welfare the whole entire time I was doing it. Okay, no, he was, he was just, uh, he, he was, uh, I guess, uh, answering or... Uh, making a, a question back to, to Circle, who said that all cops are gang members, and and maybe maybe free and slave doesn't agree with all, but I, I'm gonna say all, all cops all are, are gang members. They are a gang, the it's, blue it's, gang. It's, it's that yeah, the blue gang. That's what they call themselves. And, blue uh, line, dude. That's that. Once you're blue, you're blue. You're blue. They, they, then, they consider themselves special. They, and they'll protect each other. Oh yeah. At the expense of how many ever lives they gotta take. Right. Which chat? I'm looking at you, Gooberzilla. What do you mean? Which chat am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's switch. Oh. Let's, let's switch topics okay, here. Okay, wait, no, wait. What? I've answered this hundred. A spaceship? You know, that's really not an answer. That's just a statement. That's just like, oh, I'm saying spaceship. Okay. Yeah. We that's know. 
know, we know, we know. But it's like, this is that now, right here. <laughs> you know, fuck. No, none of us, even all of us could buy our money in this chat room, and even the money we had that we could contribute, we yeah. wouldn't even come close to being able to build a fucking spaceship. No, I know, I know. No, no fucking way. Anyway. You need fresh materials. You need fucking blah, blah, blah. Anyway, anyway, I got I got something else to to get you just as riled. Okay, great. Different topic. It's not doesn't even involve the United States. Okay. Of course, it's probably not that far off here. <laughs> Australia will now fine parents twice a month if they don't vaccinate their kids. Oh my God. That's, That's right. Not good. Australia's no jab, no pay policy just got a little stronger, or at least more insistent. Under the previous policy, parents who did not keep their children up to date on vaccinations would miss out on a one time end of the year tax benefit called a family tax benefit part A, valued at uh, seven hundred and thirty seven Australian dollars. Under the updated policy, those same parents will instead lose $28 every two weeks while their child is not up to date, they call it. Up to okay, date. I would be moving or going to an ab the Aborigines and asking them to adopt me. Yeah, something. That's what I would do. Or just say, screw it, I'm going like, to lose $737 a year, fine. Right, but then what if they keep increasing that? You know, ah. a lot of people need that fucking money. But right, they well. Like here, then people need that fucking money. That's what happens when you get government involved. Anyway. Right. Um, immunization. That's called force. That is called force. That is not freedom. It listen, takes, it takes, listen to this statement by Australia's Minister for Social Services, Dan Tehan. Immunization is the safest way to protect children from vaccine-preventable diseases. Parents who don't immunize their children are putting their own kids at risk, yes. as well as the children of other people. Blame the parents. They're bad parents. They're being abusive. They're and, not but giving as, them but, lots of vaccination. But as, as has been pointed out here on many occasions, well, if the vaccines work, how are you putting other people's children at risk? <laughs> and if they don't work, what are you doing? Why are you making them get them? Um, it says parents will miss out on approximately the same amount of money in the end. The updated, updated policy serves more as a constant reminder that the government of Australia wants all children vaccinated. Uh, yeah, take this poison or else. Or else. Uh, right. The Australian government has been paying or has been attempting to quell the anti-vaccine movement for years and first introduced the No Jab, No Pay campaign in 2016. Since then, nearly 246,000 or a quarter million families have taken steps to meet the requirements, Ugh. coerced into getting their kids poisoned. Now, wow. I, I, and I, I just got to say on this here, because, wow. <laughs> you know, um, it's not really necessarily the vaccines that are the problem. It's all the crap they put into them. So if right. you, if you want people to start using the vaccines, quit adding all the poisons to the vaccine, because if all it is is a uh, an effective way to uh, prevent a particular disease or whatever, then you don't need to put all that shit in there. But but you're no, putting you it don't. in there as for whatever reason, and it will just Whenever, go on yeah. the uh, on the un tinfoil hatted side. And say it's it's for shelf life, for preservation of of, of the right. vaccine. Although we know that's not really the reason, no. but we'll go ahead and say that's the reason because, well, you know, I maybe have my tinfoil hat sitting next to me rather than on my head right now. Um. <laughs> and whenever anything is forced, be wary. Be very wary. Anything that's forced is not a good thing. And they're obviously forced, trying to force people into doing this. So you know, if if you want if you want people to stop being anti-vaxxers, quit putting poisons in what's supposed to be something helpful. Right. It's it's not it's not that that, that difficult, but you guys won't do that, and you'll just point out anybody that 
rejects your poison as being a lunatic, uh, 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 an outsider, an edger, an uh, extremist. Okay, this is what it's called. It's called reverse psychology. Right. That's what they're doing. They're using reverse psychology to get people to do this shit. Yeah. Because if if you don't do this, which we know, you know, the people that are in the know know this shit's bad, right? Right, right. But yet, the, then they, if the parents that don't do it, they label the ones as, like you say, the tits are bad parents. Right. It's called reverse psychology. So anyway, one of the uh, good stories this week, apparently good story, um, was the, uh, the, the the kids in the Thailand cave, right? Yes. And everybody was story. hooping and hollering and jumping up and down because it was because the kids were saved and that was great. It was good to see them, them twelve kids and even the coach saved out of yeah. that deal. But what if you weren't one of those? What if you were somewhere else in the world while these yeah. while these twelve kids were down there being saved and all of the people that were saving them? Mm-hmm. From globalresearch.ca, starving and bombed children of Yemen seek entrapment in flooded Thai cave. What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it says, while the world watched and wailed with bated breath for the outcome of the substantial global effort involving over a hundred cave divers from various countries, a thousand members of the Thai army, 10,000 others in various roles, to rescue a team of 12 young footballers and their coach who were trapped inside a flooded cave in Thailand for 17 days. 850,000 children were killed by humans, adults, and other parts of the world. Many of them simply starved to death in Yemen or other parts of Africa, Asia, and Central South America. But other children were killed in ritual sacrifice. Many were killed after being sexually trafficked, raped, and tortured. Many were killed in wars, including in Yemen. Many were killed while living under military occupation. Many died as child soldiers or while working as, work, or while working as slave laborers. And vast numbers of other children suffered violence in a myriad of other forms ranging from violence, including sexual, sexual violation, inflicted in the family home, to lives of poverty, homelessness, and misery in wealthy industrialized countries, or as refugees fleeing conflict zones. Why did the world's corporate media highlight the flooded Thai cave so graphically, and why do so many ordinary people respond with such interest? Meaning genuine emotional engagement in this story, but not the others that he just mentioned. And what does this tell us about the human psychology and geopolitics? Needless to say, a great deal. During the Thai cave drama, major corporate media outlets such as the Washington Post and the BBC were ru routinely releasing breaking news updates on the status of the rescue effort. At high points in the drama, reports on this issue were overshadowing major political and other stories of the day. At the same time, there were no breaking news stories on any of the many myriad forms of violence against children which were, and are still, killing 50,000 children every day. Right. 50,000 a day. <laughs> so the but corporate the media doesn't focus on that. No, they don't. They, they, they ignore it. They hide it. They, they do anything they can to make sure you don't even know about it. Um. Right. So I'll, I'll, I'll put the post, the link to the post in the in the blog, and I'll give it to you in the chat here. But uh, the thing is, uh, and it, and it was you know nice to see um, all those kids saved and all of the right. people put all their effort in. But think about the rest of this. Th th think about what, what's actually you know the, the stuff that's going, going on out there and right. the, these kids that are suffering day in and day out and dying because uh, yeah now Google posts a poverty map here and um, this is the United States where there's not really a great deal of poverty <laughs> we've talked about it and there is some of course uh, right uh, and, and the poverty is um, 
much higher now than it was just back in 2000. Oh, uh, yeah, apparently. Too. It really hasn't changed in New Mexico, though, I'm, I'm seeing. <laughs> but, but a lot of other states have picked up on that poverty. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the uh, United States poverty is really nothing compared to most other countries. Um, no, it isn't. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Jamaica. I've been to Puerto Rico. I've seen real poor people, real poor existence. I've been to North Dakota. Um, I've been to the reservation up in northern Wisconsin. I've been to uh, through other places. I've been through Milwaukee, the ghetto area there. I call it a ghetto because it fucking is. And, uh, yeah, it's not pretty. Yeah. And, and, I see and, the homeless people here in Eau Claire. You know, right? Uh, and the, the, the people numbers, walking around. The, yep. the numbers creep keep growing as the. Uh, yep. What would you call it? The the the, the difference between the, the rich and the poor uh, keep, keeps growing every you know all the time because that's the way it's set up. Oh, big time! But uh, yeah, it is set up that way. Oh yeah. Yep. Right. Right. Mr. Row, for sure. You got it, buddy. You know it. But but no worries. Your your government's got the priorities straight. Yeah. 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 They do. <laughs> No, they don't. <laughs> for, for, <laughs> Not for you. For them, they do. For you, for, no. For, no. <laughs> from the National no. Review dot com, government to spend one point five million dollars making a website that already exists and only costs twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, awesome! <laughs> yeah, they got their they got their priorities just right. Yeah, the Congressional Research Service uh, prepares detailed reports about a variety of policy topics for Congress, but historically has not released those reports to the public. Instead, the reports leak out through, a, through private websites like everycsrreport.com. This has always annoyed people who closely follow debates, and it was a victory for transparency when Congress finally decided to make the reports public in, in uh, 2018. <laughs> omnibus appropriations law. But on second thought, the creators of every CSRreport.com now have this to say. Our website costs $20,000 to build and maintain with full functionality and fewer than 100 hours of programming time. The Library of Congress CRS website will cost $1.5 million, have limited functionality, suffer from significant design limitations, and not be completed for more than a year after the law was enacted and six months after the statutory deadline for completion. <laughs> yeah, they they got it all correct. They, that's, that's, that's how they do things. Um, <laughs> that's the way they think uh, things should be done for... To, on the, it's all stolen money to them. They don't care. Hey, if we need more money, we'll just we'll just raise the tax, get some more. Well, for it's that all fake you. money too. It's yeah. fiat currency, so you know they can divvy out how much money they want to go to whoever. It's all it's all manipulated by numbers and computers and everything. It's it's, yeah. it's not real. I mean, yes, there is tangible money exchange at times, but no one's out there. No rich fucks going out there and buying a boat and fuck cash. I no, no, but but like Grammy yeah. was talking about during her show earlier. You know, what they've done down there in Venezuela, since their money is now worthless, right. they've, they've just gone back to bartering. Yeah. You know, because you, you can't, right. otherwise it, it's like Zimbabwe now. You know, you got to take a wheelbarrow of money to buy a loaf of bread. And, right. And and nobody's got that money. It just, it just doesn't no. exist. So people right. are just bartering now, you know, doing whatever, labor or, or trading goods that they have for other people's goods. And, yeah. And that's, that's I, really I the way to do it. That's that, that's. Live in, live here. That do that. Well, here, if you do that, then they'll arrest they work you. They for cash and stuff. Yeah, they, they, if, they, if you if you do barter, barter, but it's very hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, if you do barter here, they'll arrest you. <laughs> but people do it on the slot. No, I know they do. <laughs> of course they do. <laughs> but but if you make it known, then then that's when they'll come get you. 
Oh yeah, they're gonna frown upon that. They don't. They want their cut. Absolutely. The government has to have. This. How dare you make money without giving us something? You know, I mean, it's like what? I fucking you didn't do shit for this money. I earned this fucking money. You didn't fucking do nothing. Yeah. Oh, we keep your, we we keep track of your paperwork. I don't give a fuck about paperwork. Right. You know, it's like. What they don't serve a purpose. They just want their cut. Exactly. It's ridiculous. Now I I, I was I wasn't even aware of this program, but apparently it's been a program, and I I don't you know so I don't know anybody that's got it or if I do I don't know that they got it. Good night, Grammy. Um, Good night, Grammy. So apparently the federal government had some kind of flood insurance program. And um, uh, yeah. I, I, I guess it allows you to buy uh, lower cost uh, flood well, insurance. I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, apparently the program's going away, or it's got the possibility of going away. I don't know. I, I heard a commercial for it on the radio today, um, and I'd really? never heard that commercial before. But um, apparently, this is it says uh, expiration of federal flood insurance program draws closer. And to me, I say, great, get rid of it. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> anything about it. And I imagine a lot of people probably use it, but whatever. Uh, anyway, it says flooding has been a looming problem for people in southwestern Pennsylvania. It's specific to that area, but it's, it's a nationwide thing. Uh, yes. Uh, flooding has been a looming problem for people in southwestern Pennsylvania for decades, but a lack of congressional action could make the matters even worse. The National Flood Insurance Program, which provides affordable whatever that means, insurance right. to people living in flood-prone areas will expire at the end of the month if Congress does not take action. Uh, the program covers more than 5 million properties, including many here in Pennsylvania. If the program expires, many homeowners could be uninsured with all the storms flooding the, Phil or the Pittsburgh area. Uh, the Pittsburgh area had the first half of the year. Many people in this region would be left vulnerable. Now, I, I know you can buy flood insurance via your normal home insurance company. Um, I, I don't know what the, what the cost is. and um, uh, But, again, why, 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 why am I, not necessarily me, but those of you that pay taxes, why am I <laughs> subsidizing right. somebody else's insurance program, uh, flood insurance, when they, when they can buy it? Um, with their own insurance yeah, company. Yeah, with their own insurance company. And, and if, right. if if this system didn't exist, then your own insurance company would probably charge less for flood insurance. Um, probably. I, I mean, I don't know, but uh, it, to me it sounds like, anyway, besides that, I'm sure this will be a thing, and it'll come up and they'll renew it. So, um, because that's how all these pork programs work, you know. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Get the reverse mortgage. <laughs> Bad uh, idea. Not necessarily. I, I might do one later, and, you know. When I, oh, really? Okay. When I, when I get up to eligible age, that's good income. and I'm, I don't have anybody to leave the house to. Well, I care. Yeah, me either. I mean, <laughs> well, I kind of do. Well, you got two boys, so late. you got somebody to leave the house to. Right, yeah. And, uh, even though I could leave the house to somebody, uh, nobody wants to come out here and live. So they'd just sell it anyway. Well, I might as well do it for myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Whatever. That's years down the line. <laughs> yeah, not, right. I'm, I'm not concerned about it at this point. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Woodman, you got to be uh, 62 to get a reverse mortgage. Oh, okay. It's, it's same as, like, getting your, uh, what do you call that, social social, social security. security. Yeah. You have, be, security? you have to be 62 to get either one of those. So. Whatever. Anyway, um, let's hear some more music. No, yeah, let's do that. All right. That's a good time. Yep. It's a good time. It's a good time for all. <laughs> yeah, you know it. Rock on. Oh, I'm on the wrong page there. All right. This uh, was originally requested by Free Enslaved, and I re-requested it today because, well, it's Friday the 13th. different
Yeah, it's different, all right. That there was a uh, circle request. Uh, it was the Propeller Heads featuring Miss Shirley Bassey doing a song called "History," repeating "Interesting Cirque." Uh, before that, we had a Cowboy Tech request of Steppenwolf in "Born to Be Wild." Kicked it off there with the Hell Freaks and Boogeyman for Happy Friday the Thirteenth to y'all. <laughs> Yeah, I love that song. Yeah, yeah, I love them all. Look at that. I better get that. Oh, too late. Okay, so I found something earlier all right. that cracked me up. And I we talked about it last week, so let me click on it here. All right. It's the one that's in the, the PM, Grim. Oh, okay, okay. I'll get I'll get there. So we talked about the Trump blimp, the ba- balloon, <laughs> the baby balloon. Yeah, the angry baby Trump. <laughs> And uh, they actually did fly this in London. Yeah, week, today. Well, he's there. He's there right now. Yeah, they, they flew it today. I, I, I recall. Yeah. And anyway, it's pretty funny. And it so some people did some mashups of Trump in different locations with the balloon. Oh, neat. Which are pretty funny. I mean, you know, I'm just trying to lighten it up a little bit here. And, you know, just I got a laugh out of it today. I mean, I, I I thought it was funny last week when I knew that they were going to um, fly this thing. And then I, I got a kick out of it when they actually did do it, you know. And there was actually a lot of people that showed up in London for the pro, these protests against Trump, which, you know, okay, cool, you know. Um, and Trump tried to blow it off like, oh, the Britons like me. Oh, no, they do not. <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> Nobody and, likes. Yeah. Nobody. And so he goes to he goes to England, right? Yeah. And so I just found this story, but it's it's I, there was a blurb that came up on Facebook how he broke tr- royal protocol like three. He walked in front of the queen. Oh, well, he's, he's more important. You never walk in front of the fucking queen. He's, he's more important than the queen, so... You never do that. <laughs> and besides that, his pants are not him. He needs a different se- tailor. I mean, okay, I'm going to link this story to you, Graham. You can see the picture. I mean, this just came out. <laughs> but what a fucking buffoon. You don't go there. I mean, I'm not all about protocol and shit. Fuck the royal family. Fuck them. You know? But, you Yeah. <laughs> he definitely needs... I mean, obviously Melania has a makeup artist and a hairdresser and a fashion, you know, a, a dresser, you know, that fits all, you know, and... A tailor. Trump's pants need to be fucking him. He looks like a fucking used car salesman sitting next to the Queen of fucking England. I mean, really, buddy? <laughs> Not in this balloon one. This other one I just linked to. No, I know. About breaking the part. Yeah. The first, oh, my God. Uh... I mean, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Fucking embarrassing. Anyway, there, there he is. He's walking with the prime minister there. <laughs> with the balloon. Yeah. Th- Theresa May. That's so funny. <laughs> Here but he anyway, is. check. All we right, got to right. see the one with the All fucking right. used car. He looks like a used fucking car salesman. No. I mean, and I understand he's probably sitting for a while, but if his pants were tailored properly, they wouldn't look that bad. You know? I mean, at least change your fucking clothes, dude. You don't look like a used car salesman. I mean, seriously. <laughs> You're supposed to be this fuck. Look at that. His pants are not him, right? I think they're taped or rolled up or something. They obviously didn't have pants with him. Tailored pants for him. Or they don't. Or maybe that's the way he likes them. But he looks like a used car salesman. He looks, he looks frumpy. Sorry, Frumpy, but he does. 
that would be a word I would be used to describe him. Wait, wait, look at look, <laughs> look at the suit. The jacket's wrinkled. It does. I mean, the pants aren't hemmed properly. Well, look at the look. He, he looks like a used car salesman. Uh, look, look at the look on her face. Yeah, she's like, "What the fuck, buddy? You're breaking <laughs> protocol. I'm the fucking queen of England, you bitch. Get out of my fucking way." You walking in front of me? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh God! I mean, Millennia. She at least is looking good. He looks like a used car salesman. He's just a fucking buffoon that doesn't know protocol. <laughs> I mean, they would have Obama when he went there. He didn't do this. Well, oh well. She doesn't but look Trump's real. like, I don't give a shit. I don't care. I'm not. This, I'm not from England. <laughs> I don't care. Oh. But anyway, here's the link for the story that I let. I'll link to it. All right. So that yeah, uh, that, that other there. one, those those were not actual uh, pictures of him walking with with the the prime minister. Uh, those were photoshops. <laughs> yeah, the, with the balloon. Yeah, yeah. well, they're first. But, I mean, his suit is, I mean... <laughs> he, he just looks... Ah, he is what he terrible. is. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just like, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. You know, the thing that I know, people, like, say I'm not right or criticize me or whatever, but I know the truth. I know that this fucking history between the U.S. and England goes way fucking back, and it would make your head spin off your body if you fucking knew, you know? Well, well, well while, while we're talking about the royals, we might as well cover this. Okay. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Pope Francis orders white women to breed with Muslims. Are you... What? <laughs> yes, I'm serious. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm serious. Um, <laughs> this can't... What? <laughs> That's right. Pope, Pope Francis has compared Jesus Christ to the leader of the Islamic you terrorist death cult. What? and suggested Christian missionaries have a lot in common with members of ISIS. During a wide-ranging and shocking interview in which he also openly promoted socialism and ordered European women to breed with Muslim migrants in order to counter declining birth rates. <laughs> he says, Today, I don't think there is a fear of Islam as such, but of ISIS and its war of conquest which is partly uh, drawn from Islam. He told the French newspaper La Croix, It is true that the idea of conquest is inherent to the soul of Islam. However, it is also possible to interpret the objective of Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus sends his disciples to all nations in terms of the same idea of conquest. There you have it. Christians are... are are, are equal to Muslims because they both want to convert you into their thing or get rid of you. The Pope also admitted he does not enjoy learning about European history and he dreads hearing about the Christian roots of Europe because in his opinion the history of Europe has colonially, colonialist overtones. Well, what country doesn't? Right. I mean, they, they, they all, all those lands were invaded and taken from somebody. Um, it was at this point in the interview where Pope Francis called on European women to integrate Muslim, Muslim migrants into their populations by breeding with them and countering the declining birth rate that he blames on the selfishness of white people. That's right, you dirty white people. You, you... <laughs> Yeah, fuck. <laughs> this Pope is fucking nuts. 
I love him. Uh, he, he said so many crazy ass things, you know. Since no I'm kidding, uh, uh, the fucking Catholics are fucking nuts. <laughs> the fucking Roman fuck the Vatican is fucking nuts. <laughs> well, the Pope is really nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's like an insane asylum for fucking pedophiles. It's it's ridiculous. Oh, he says, he goes on to say, Europe has become old and decrepit and needs human reinforcement. They are not motivated, voted, motivated <laughs> by compassion for the Levant, its people, and its refugees. Soon we will trample them underfoot. All a willing, he stated. Pope saying, all a willing. Okay, uh, throughout Europe and all the hearts... Uh, all of the hearts are enthused with hatred towards Muslims. They wish that they were dead, but they have lost their fertility, so they look for fertility in our midst. We will give are them you fertility. Are kidding me? <laughs> we will give them fertility. We will breed children with them, because we shall conquer their countries. Okay, someone's holding a gun in that fucker's head. No, he's just nuts. He's just nuts. <laughs> This Pope is just, he's, he's out of his mind. And he's got to be, no, he's got to be either not so like you say, or someone's threatening him. I don't think anybody's threatening him. I, I, I think he's just purely cuckoo. <laughs> How can the Catholics, no, they they would not be good with this. <laughs> This, is, uh, this doesn't make sense. This hey, is not hey if you're a Catholic, you know better than to question the Pope. The, the Pope. But I'm not Catholic, good thing. The the Pope is God's right hand man, and and whatever he says goes because God's not down here yeah, telling well, you that. telling you what's right and what's wrong. So, no, fuck that. Uh, so if you're if you are a Catholic, then then you don't question. Right. His yeah, fucking guy. No, fuck that. <laughs> Everything's just turned upside down. Uh, absolutely. Which is probably good. Now, I came across this article. And, and I, I wished it was not right and wrong, uh, not, <laughs> not not correct, but I, I, I don't know for sure. But it, maybe it's true. I don't know. Or maybe it's a scare tactic. I, I have no idea. It's, <laughs> it's from therooster.com. And, All right. and the title of the article is, Why the Fuck is Fentanyl Showing Up in LSD, Meth, and Cocaine? Hmm. Now, I can see how you might get some fentanyl and meth and cocaine, but how could right. you get into LSD? I mean, I don't know. you're talking about, you know, micro dots, just right. tiny, tiny little amounts, and so... I don't know how much fentanyl it takes to affect somebody, but not a lot. It's it's um, a little it's gotta, bit. It's got to be a lot more than than the LSD. Um, Probably, maybe, but I'm sure it doesn't take a lot. Anyway, it says the opioid epidemic is infecting the wider world of drugs. The super powerful, addictive, and deadly opioids fentanyl and carafentanil are killing thousands of people who are hooked on the warm nodding high of heroin-like drugs. But these drugs are now occasionally fucking with people who aren't trying to do opioids, people who are trying to feel the wave of beauty of LSD, or the exuberant euphoria of cocaine, or the energetic focus of meth. On acid tabs handed out in a concert this weekend in Chicago, fentanyl was found, according to a post on Facebook, in conversations with two people who were there. Twelve people were hauled out of a show, a concert goer told Rooster. Two are in critical condition. It scared oh, Leah Bartolota, Bar Bartolota, whatever, who attended Bass Nectar concert. Is that a band? Yeah, okay. Bass Nectar, yep. Yeah. As security guards rushed her by escorting a sick person out. It wasn't just the one show. Acid laced with fentanyl, which is a drug 50 times stronger than heroin, is a real thing, authorities confirm. Uh, in Quebec late last month, cops said they seized blotter paper that looks like acid, but which contains carafentanil. Oh, Car fucking A. Carafentanil is a cousin of fentanyl, but a hundred times as powerful. The amount of, uh, the amount, an amount, the size of a coarse grain of salt can kill you. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. I, I was unaware. Um, the, this is particularly concerning because the sample, sample was on blotter containing the, containing the famous Albert Hoffman bicycle ride print, which has been used to distribute LSD for decades. This is Dan Safe, a, a goer trusted company. So, that, I mean, government involvement? Uh, probably. Uh, yeah. No, no one is known to have died from the LSD laced with fentanyl yet, but the cocaine laced with fentanyl has, in fact, killed people. 30, 40, and 50-year-olds are celebrating with their, their big birthday with a line of coke and keeling over, NPR reported last week, and regular cocaine users reported feeling the expected rush, then falling asleep. And in the after, in just this afternoon, Dance Safe reported that fentanyl was found in meth in Portland. Uh, finding the fentanyl and cocaine method LSD is very rare, according to experts. Experts. Um, right. <laughs> it should stay rare because it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'll let you read the rest. It's got more details and stats and such like that. But um, quit screwing with the LSD. You know, if you want to screw with the meth, yeah, you're probably all right there. <laughs> oh. I don't know, but wow. I mean, if you buy these things uh, out in the open at a concert or whatever, then you, you are taking a risk. Yeah, you are. You, no matter you, what. You, you never know. Yeah. I used to, I used to buy my my acid down at the beach, and um, from you know bikers or. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, and and it was usually pretty good stuff. Um, yeah. And the only time I actually got burned on it, somebody was selling me some what was supposed to be window paint and it. And it was not. It was like plastic or something. I don't know what the hell it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. You know, you know how window pane just dissolves in it like a minute on, yeah. on your tongue. But this stuff, it just never dissolved and it didn't do anything. So <laughs> I figured it was a chunk of plastic. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> wow. Either way, you know, like I say, you take your risks when you do that. And, yeah, and, you do. You know, even with shrooms, you're... Oh yeah, you, you, you can never. Know. You can never. I, I've had bad shrooms, not bad where they made you sick, just bad where they not, didn't do anything. Yeah, where they didn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't do anything. <laughs> it's like okay. <laughs> but, that was great. Not. Not. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're all you're all ready. You know, it's like you're prepared right. and you're ready to go and. And then all of a sudden, nothing happens. Yeah, you're like, okay, well, that Bastard. was not cool. <laughs> it's happened. It does happen. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, be safe all there, people. They, they can't really do that with weed, because you can tell. I mean, we, weed's easy to tell if it's if it's actual. First off, if it's actually weed or not. And then, right. uh, uh, second off, whether it's good weed or whether there's something else on it. Exactly. You can yeah. tell. Yeah. So. Exactly. But, uh, wow. Exactly, Hans. I, I know. It, it, okay, I could see it in cocaine, maybe in meth. You know, there's a powders that you snort, and there's a you know a fairly decent quantity. But LSD. But then again, that thing said that a, a size of a grain of salt, which yes. could easily be added to a to a blotter, blotter squares. You know. Um, right. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's something I. Not not something I would have expected or, or thought about, but uh Yeah, it's not good. Like I said, it's gotta be government involvement. Speaking of government involvement They're trying to kill us, you know, they're killing us slowly. <laughs> they're doing whatever means they can possible to do it. They'll do it however they fucking think they can. They they want a lot of us dead. Just oh, remember yeah. that. Absolutely. They want most of us dead. So Dead or locked up doing their slave labor. There you go. Yep. Yep. Well, or in the mili in their military doing their dirty work for them. But but speaking of government involvement, <laughs> it says here on uh, drinksreform dot org. Actually, beer pitchers are bad. <sighs> Last summer, R Street, R Street's Cameron Smith caused a stir by calling out Alabama's interpretation of a regulation that targeted margarita pitchers. The Alabama Alcoholic Beverage Control Board was forced to backtrack 
conceding that it would leave the pitchers alone. But don't be fooled. Unruly drink pitchers are hardly confined to Alabama. In fact, our nation's capital was recently forced to enact an even stricter rule to control its pitcher epidemic. Thanks to some quick-thinking government officials, D.C. law now officially prohibits customers from picking up pitchers and carrying them around a restaurant. This regulation is a great example of local government attempting to respond to one of the paramount threats of our day. In fact, the only problem we can see with D.C.'s rule is that it fails to fully appreciate, appreciate just how dangerous pictures are. <laughs> it all started last year when DC's Alcoholic Beverage Control Board implemented a new rule declaring that bars and restaurants were allowed to offer bottle service to the customers so long as they did not allow any patrons to remove the bottle or pitcher from the table. The, the regulation's purpose is to curb the practice of patrons wandering around the establishment with large containers containing multiple servings of alcoholic beverages. Cracking down on the wandering drink co containers is oh important, gosh. of course, because large containers may be used as weapons. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making this up. After, uh, after all, <laughs> who among us hasn't visited a, visited a restaurant in order to pitcher of our favorite boozy beverage, only to drown its its contents and use the empty contain, container to sm smack a fellow patron upside the head? Hey, you know what this is leading to, though? <laughs> no. You go to a restaurant that has steak, the waiter is going to have to cut your steak for you because you're not going to be allowed to have a fucking steak knife to cut your own fucking food. Uh, that's all right. This is where this is going, people. I, I, I carry my own knife, so I'm all right. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, this is where it's going. That They're not going to even put knives, sharp knives at tables in restaurants anymore. They're going to have the waiters going to have to cut your food for you. Or it's going to have to be pre-cut. Before it comes out of the kitchen, because they can't allow people to have fucking sharp knife in a public place. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> oh, it says, for starters, pitchers have intricately designed handles that ergonomically mold to the human hand, right. al allowing customers to arm themselves faster than you can say, I'll have a pitcher of Miller Lite. Of course, <laughs> I would never say that. But, no, I would I would not either. <laughs> but pitchers can be weaponized in less intuitive ways too. In addition to being useful useful for whacking surly bartenders, shattering a glass pitcher can create dangerous shards, handy oh, for yeah. stabbing fellow bar patrons. <laughs> oh my god. Really? Wow. Uh, government involvement. You gotta love it. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Jesus. All right, let's hear some more music. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Yeah, I, yeah. Ah, I tell you, this is a fucked up world. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> what if you're suddenly worried about? Uh, well, who yeah, stopped that? Gone. I did that last week too. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> here we go. Samantha Fish. This is not explosive. Oh, yeah, there's the doors there for y'all doing a little tune called Not to Touch the Earth. Uh, that was new from Monroe's Retro, by the way. Uh, before that, Eric Clapton and Joe Bonamassa doing a little tune called Further On Up The Road. Excellent guitar on both sides of that battle. If it was a battle, I think they were just collaborating. Uh, but either way, kick it off with Samantha Fish doing R.L. Burnside's Shake Em On Down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the little bit of blues for you. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, I was going to play No, this. we play a lot of blues on the Yeah, show. we do play a lot of blues here, and, and because, well, we like to play good music, and... We do. And and so it just follows. We're going to play the blues. <laughs> yeah, it's natural, you know. If you like good music, you have to play the blues. Right. Is this, oh, yeah, that's not. what that is. Did I? I didn't play this before, did I? I don't think so. I'm not sure. I don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes I play a, so a song and I'll forget to delete it from the list. And right. Anyway, it happens. Whatever. Um, exactly, it happens. That's okay. We have repeats. That we do. I mean, we have to put repeat good song, obviously, you know. Right, right. The, the, the freaker standards, of course, we have. Right. Those. I mean, like some songs you come across and you're just like, oh my god, this is like an awesome rendition. Like this is a standard. Right. For our show, I mean, you know, some songs are just so amazing. <laughs> oh right, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I seriously, I am not like this. I mean, you're more of a star than me when it comes to music around because I think I have. Well, I don't know if I'm open or something, but um, music just does something for me. I mean, it just helps me. I, 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 you know, I'm a dancer, and seriously, when I go to a festival, sometimes when I come back and it's like. I go through a little bit of withdrawal. Like, when I came back from Blue Ops, I had a couple of days where I'm, like, so de depressed. <laughs> Not really depressed, like, suicidal or anything like that, but just, like, oh, my God, shit, back to reality, you know? I wish I could was there. I could see Austin look like that every fucking day, you know? I mean, you know, stuff like that. Like, you do. You feel a little bit of, like, nostalgia or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's hard to explain, but it does, you know, music is, like, part of my life. I mean, like, if I, I don't know what my life would be like if I didn't have that, you know? I know. I mean, think about it. Like, even you, you're fucking, you're a musical in the music big time. Oh, yeah, I listen, I listen to music yeah. all day, you know? Every day I'm listening to music, so, yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it... You know, I think it's it's just a life one. You know what I mean? I think it's like a human necessity. Right. You know? Sure, sure. I mean, like, you know, like talking about Blue Ops. When I'm at Blue Ops, I mean, seriously, there are people there that are in their 80s. Exactly. No, I'm only in my 50s, Matt. No, there's people there that are in their 80s. But then you hit, but, you know, we had Del McCurry there. Del McCurry's 80. Yeah. You know, I mean, people love it so much that they go to a festival when it's super fucking hot out. They're not 18, they're not 21, but they're 80, and they're going out there, and they're putting up their chair, and they're sitting there listening to this. You know what I mean? Right. They're not dancing, they're not doing that, but they're just sitting there listening to it. They, they, they took the time out of their, their life. And it means so much to them that even at 80 years old, they're going to a bluegrass festival. God damn it. <laughs> you know? Sure. It's like, that's how I want to be. And you will be. I have no doubt will you will be. be. That's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be like them people. I, I have no doubt yeah. that you will be. Okay, I've, I've been saving this till the end. Okay. I want to talk about this okay. issue. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, great. And I've talked about it on here before, but it, it's, it's 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 bugging me, so I got to talk about it. And it means nothing. It's such a tiny issue. Okay. Starbucks bla bans plastic straws. Yeah, I heard it. Okay. Winds up using more plastic. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> From, from Reason.com, a Reason investigation reveals that the coffee giant's new cold drink lids use more plastic than the old <laughs> straw lid combo. <laughs> so this Imagine 20, that. 2018 will forever be remembered as the year that hating plastic straws went mainstream. Once the lonely cause of environmental cranks, now everyone wants to eliminate these suckers from daily life. In July, Seattle imposed America's first ban, the whole city, 
uh, uh, America's first ban on plastic straws. Vancouver, British Columbia passed a similar ban a few months earlier. Uh, there are active attempts to prohibit straws in New York City, Washington, D.C., Portland, Oregon, and San Francisco. And A-list celebrities, A-list celebrities, um, from Calvin Harris to Tom Brady, have lectured us on giving up straws. Both National Geographic and The Atlantic have run long profiles on the history and environmental effects on the straw. Vice is now treating their consumption as dirty, hedonistic excess. <laughs> hedonistic to use a straw. <laughs> All right. Okay. Not, yep. uh, not to be outdone by uh, busybody legislators, Starbucks, the nation's largest food and drink retailer, announced on Monday that it would be going strawless. This is okay, the, so I, let me just interject, okay. because this is what started this whole thing. Okay was this picture of this tortoise with a straw on its nose. With what? A straw on its nose. Okay. Okay, this is what started this whole thing about the straw. But it's not just straws, it's all plastic. See, that's where they're going wrong. Like, it's not, I mean, straws are bad because they are like a straight thing. You know what I mean? They're like a projectile. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they could be. I mean, how, but, how many tortoises were starting cocaine and getting them straw stuck in their Yeah, nose? you never know. That could be, you know. A anyway, this says here. I understand that, that they're calling that picture, that image, the poster child of the anti-straw movement. Okay, anyway, it goes on to say here, yet missing from this fanfare was the inconvenient fact that ditching plastic straws, or by ditching plastic straws, Starbucks will actually be increasing its plastic use. As it turns out, the new nitro lids that Starbucks is leaning on to replace straws are made up of more plastic than the company's current lid right. and straw combination. So right. it's like, it, it doesn't solve the problem. Well, it does, I guess, for them. It says right now, okay. <laughs> Star, because cause it's just an image thing. Um, okay, I got a new slash. No, I better not say this. I better not say this on the air, Go on ahead. the show. Go ahead. If any company was smart, they would switch to an eco-friendly cups and eco-friendly tops and eco-friendly straws. Well, that was my next. That's my it next. That, that's, that's my next topic after this article. Okay. All if right. I, if I have time, which it looks like I might not, but okay. um, either way, so. Uh, anyway, there's the link for that. You you just read it. It's an increase in the amount of plastic overall. Like they get rid of one thing, but then they increase in the other. So they're really not solving the problem at all. No, but but I right. and I went through and I did a bunch of research on 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 hemp plastics, um, and and <laughs> which we have talked about on this before. Yeah. Yeah. Where where did I put a bat here? Oh, here they are. They're down here. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that in order to be truly eco-friendly, you need to create containers and vessels and covers and straws that are biodegradable. Okay, so I'll I'll just give you these these links and and put them into the okay. blog. You can read them for yourself. But uh, this this one here from herb.co could hemp plastic save our planet? We need to embrace yeah. hemp or suffer the consequences. And that's that's absolutely true. Um, yes, I agree. And so so there's that. Um, and then I have another one here. Let me unmark that one. Um, let's see, I have another one. Okay. But it's hemp is it, the hemp plant also creates marijuana plants that are very beneficial as well. And yes, we should smoke weed. If, if, <laughs> well, we if should. you can tolerate it, then so fucking weed. We absolutely should, but but we're just talking about plastics at this point in time. Right. So, so hemp plastic, hemp makes great plastics. So why isn't hemp plastic everywhere? I um, hate that term for it, plastic because it's really not plastic because it's biodegradable. Plastic it, is it's not. absolutely biodegradable, and uh, yeah. and it'll go away. So there you go from the Ministry of Hemp dot com. Um, there you go. We're out of time. We're out of time. I got. I got to start the set here. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> so I can go. 
But uh, I have one more link that, that I'll, I'll throw into the uh, uh, the blog, and um, and you okay. guys can uh, be sure you everybody check out read the blog after I post it up tomorrow, and uh, you'll you'll see that uh, <clears throat> hemp is the way to go. All right. So this is brand new from some guy you may know. His name is John Prime. Black bit air. <laughs> Stoner Train. Yeah, their version of Black Betty there. Before that, the Black Angels with Manipulation. Uh, previous to that, the Traveling Wilburys. She's my baby. The, the girl on the harmonica, her name is Indiara Safir. That's I-N-D-I-A-R-A-S-F-A-I-R. Now, if you are a harmonica person, she has a lot of excellent tabs up there to teach you various uh, harmonica songs. So check her out, Indiara Safair. And we kicked it off with the new one from John Prine, Knockin' on Your Screen Door. All right, folks, uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, tomorrow we got the dork table. Vinny promises to be here, so we should have a good show there at noon Eastern. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, well, you know, yeah, you know. <laughs> anyway, so he promises to be here. So uh, look for Flash and Vinny at noon Eastern right here on RLM Radio. I'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern with the blues for three hours and the trivia in the chat right here. Have a good old time, fun, fun stuff. Uh, Hal Anthony follows me with... Uh, behind the woodshed there. Check him out. He'll open up a big old can of whoop-ass. Then uh, Grammy comes back at her normal time Wednesday. Wednesday evening. Yep. So, uh, I think that's it. You got anything else? Uh, just have a kick-ass weekend, everyone. That's right. Happy Friday the 13th. You know it. Peace. <laughs>